are already yours. I want you to believe that. I want you to receive it. I want you to accept that, that the promises are already yours in your living room, in your dining room, in your bedroom, in your car. I want you to repeat after me and I want you to do it with all of the vim, vigor, and enthusiasm you can muster. Would you repeat after me? I will be blessed. Come on, say it like you believe it. I will be blessed. I will be multiplied. I will be increased. I will not be left. I will be connected. If you believe it, give God glory for it even now. I want to thank uh, our leaders for leading us uh, on tonight. Uh, we are uh, smack dab in the middle of this series, uh, Your Word is Your Bond. And I want to talk to you about that for a little while on tonight. You may be seated. Would you do me a favor? Would you tag somebody? Would you text somebody? Would you call somebody uh, and tell them, particularly if they're under the canopy of the covering of new birth, I need everybody who is connected to this ministry to be tuned in on tonight. This is so critical. This is so vital for where I feel the Holy Spirit is leading us in this moment and in this season. I, um, when I moved here about uh, now two and a half years ago, uh, not soon after uh, getting uh, my feet on the ground, I immediately started looking for a house, looking for where I was going to live, where I was going to stay. And uh, for me, uh, my real estate agent was not moving at the speed that I would have desired. Uh, so I thought I could assist her in the process. So I started going online, looking for a house myself. The crazy thing, if you don't live in Atlanta, you wouldn't know this in Atlanta. I'm telling you, the real estate market is crazy. Uh, I'm telling you, as soon as a house goes up, it is gone. And uh, I went online and I uh, found the house that I wanted in the neighborhood that I wanted, the square footage that I wanted, the amenities that I wanted. And I sent it to my real estate agent. I said, this is it. It's for sale. I need you to call them, get me an appointment. I need to walk through it. This is the house that I want. Send all of that in the email. And 10 minutes later, I get a phone call. She said, Jamal, this is a nice house. I didn't see it. Uh, but I, I need to tell you something. I, I, I said, does it have a roof problem? She says, no, is it? I want a shaky foundation. No. Is it uh, in a bad neighborhood? No. Did somebody die in the basement? Uh, no. Are there burglars around there? No. I said, uh, it's within the price margin that I want, in the neighborhood that I want. It's got all of the space that I want. Why can't I have it? And my realtor said to me, you can't have it because it's already under contract. I said, what, what does that mean that it's under contract? She said, um, I need you to understand that it is not sold, but they have an agreement. The buyer and the seller have come to the terms and the timeline as well as the price. I said, has the buyer bought the house yet? She said, no, it hadn't been bought. 
I said, have they given them the check? No, they haven't given them the check. I said, then how come I can't have it? He says, you can't have it because it's under contract. I said, how you know they got more money than me? <laughs> they, they, they may find out it's me and want to give it to me. They said, even if they know it's you and want to give it to you, they can't because it's under contract. Um, Satan was going up and down to and fro looking for somebody to devour. And he saw Job was available. And he put in a bid for it. Can I have Job? And God responded back, you can have him. He's under contract. He's already spoken for. The late Dr. Caesar Augustus William Clark out of a Good Street Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, tells a story that when he was a young man growing up in Louisiana, he went in a restaurant and saw a woman that he was uh, interested in and finally got his nerve together to go and approach her and introduce himself. He got right up on the table, and as soon as he got on the table, he saw that she had on an engagement ring. So he scratched his head and turned around on his heels and realized it was nothing he could do because she was spoken for, had a contract. A lot of you don't even understand that's what covenant is. Covenant is an agreement, the power of agreement. That's why the enemy hates the power of agreement because Satan understands he has legal limitations when a contract has been confirmed. Engagement, the house, hear this, are our closest modern day analogies for matching what it requires to be under contract. In the contract, here it is, whether you're buying a house, whether you're buying a car, whether you're buying an engagement ring, or whether you are constructing a living will, whatever it is that we have, it is legally binding. The covenants in the Bible are more than contracts. They're covenants. And because uh, they are uh, covenants, they are never about houses, they're not about rings. It's invariably about people. It's a commitment that establishes relationship. Here it is, but it can't just be with one person. And the amazing thing about the covenants in the Bible, none of them required a signature. They all demanded integrity. I am talking to those of you who have professed Jesus as the Lord of your life. You've given him your heart, given him your soul, given him your mind. The moment you did it, whether it was at a tent meeting, whether it was at a convocation, whether it was at revival, whether it was at prayer, whether it was on a Sunday morning, you then got into contract with God. The very first real estate property under covenant it was not a penthouse in Buckhead. It's not a gated home in Alpharetta. It was the Garden of Eden. In Genesis, amazingly, we never hear the word covenant. But I need you to go and hopscotch over in Hosea chapter 6. And in Hosea chapter 6, verse number 7, here's what the writer penned. That like Adam transgressed the covenant, implying that Adam's relationship to God was covenantal in nature. The tree of good and evil was probationary. Can you imagine? God planted the tree as a test to see if he could handle covenant, to see whether his word would be his bond. He understood, hear this, uh, that testing Adam was necessary because he possibly had given Adam too much freedom. Freedom without testing leads to immaturity. 
and bad decisions. Had Adam passed the covenant tests, then he would have had eternal life in paradise. God was promised to Adam, hear this, his posterity on the condition of obedience. That in obedience to the covenant, he would be allergic to death. And now, because he couldn't handle the covenant, death becomes his best friend. Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, friends, colleagues, comrades, Adam and Eve were the people in paradise with access to his presence. Adam and Eve were the people. The Garden of Eden was the place. His presence was the gift because all of those are necessary for covenant. You got to have people, you got to have place, and you've got to have his presence. And Adam and Eve, can you imagine it, would have lived rent-free for the rest of their life had they honored the covenant. They would have never known sickness had they honored the covenant. Y'all ain't going to like it. They would have never had to go to work had they honored the covenant. Eve would have had babies with no labor. And she would have just honored the covenant. They broke the covenant. And because they broke the covenant, they messed up people. They got put out of the place and then had to fight to get back into his presence. Watch how we find that cycle spin again with Abraham. The Lord gave it to him in Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. I need you to read it when it is that you get home. He says um, uh, to Abraham that I am going to make you a great nation. That's people. I'm going to give you a great land. That's the place. I'm going to be with you. That's my presence. The covenant that God is getting ready to come into agreement with you for, I need you to hear this, is going to bless you in three different dimensions. The covenant that God is inviting you into tonight are going to have three benefits. Number one, the first beneficiary of your covenant is whoever is your people. God, help me. Your family, your last name, your lineage, your children are going to get blessed because of your covenant. Then all the more, hear this, those of you who are in the chat, I need you to write your last name in the chat right now. Those of you who are in this studio space, speak your last name out loud right now. Speak your last name out loud right now. I said speak your last name out loud. All of them are getting ready to get blessed because of your covenant. Now the rest of your family ain't even got to make the covenant. But because they are connected to you, they're going to be able to live on the overflow of your covenant. So I'm going to bless your people. Uh, I am uh, going to bless, here it is, your place. The amazing thing in um, Old Testament scripture, uh, even in New Testament, there was no addresses. So there was no 30, 11, 34, 9, 4,000, 17, 23. There were no addresses. On the front of houses, hear this, was last names. So the house of Brian, house of Sailor, house of Ross is what is on the house. Um, my parents uh, live in Baltimore. Uh, my uh, sister lives in uh, Malibu, California. I live in Atlanta. But here's what's crazy. My sister's in California. Uh, I'm in uh, Atlanta. Uh, but while my sister's in California, I'm in Atlanta. We are under the house of Bryant. While it is that my parents live in Baltimore. 
I, th I think I'm losing you. So he's saying, here it is. I don't even care what your address is. Whoever is in your name, no matter where they occupy, they are getting ready to inhabit the blessings. In other words, a blessing cannot be homeless. Mm -hmm. A blessing cannot be without shelter. So God is getting ready to do something for housing. For whoever is in your family, in your bloodline, whoever's got your last name, I don't care where they live tonight, but housing is getting ready to open up for them. I can't believe y'all ain't shouting about it. God told me to tell just those of y'all that can handle it, you will not renew that lease. You are not a renter. You are an owner. What I have for you is the oil that was given to Joshua. Every place the sole of your feet tread upon, I'm getting ready to give it to you. Do you know why you don't know how to shout? It's because you don't know how you're supposed to act as a homeowner. But if you believe real estate is supposed to be yours, you ought to be giving God glory because because the covenant says, I will give you houses that you did not build. 2022 is going to be a year of house warmings. I just said something. I said 2022 is going to be a year of housewarmings. 2022 is going to be a year of ribbon cuttings. 2022 is going to be a year of bridal showers. 2022 is going to be a year of grand openings. If you don't want that blessing, don't get in covenant with us. But if you need God to prepare a place for you, be under the covenant says, I'm, I'm going to bless, I'm going to bless your people, I'm going to bless you with a place, here it is, but I cannot bless your people, I cannot bless your people with a place if they do not have access to my presence. Hallelujah to the living God. Isn't it amazing that Adam and Eve, when they went in the Garden of Eden, some of y'all ain't going to like it, fasting was not necessary. In the Garden of Eden, they did not have to tarry for his presence. In the Garden of Eden, here it is, they did not wait for seasons for God's arrival to move the pool. They would just talk and he would answer right in that minute. I declare for intercessors, get ready for your ear to be enlarged. That you are going to hear the voice of God clearer now than you have heard him since you've been saved. I know some of you only want the tangible things of God, but those of you that want his presence to say you are the air I breathe, that in you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. Your people, your place, my presence, all come with the covenant. And regrettably, I've got a report back to you tonight that all three are squandered because of broken covenant. Because they broke their covenant, their family is a mess. Because they broke their covenant for the first time ever, they got to look for somewhere to live. Because they broke their covenant, they are escorted outside of his presence. I don't know how you feel about it, but I want to be under covenant with God. Because I realize that it is not just for me. My family's welfare is on the line. I have got to remain in covenant with God because I want to make sure that I am not retiring with trepidation or insecurity. I want to be clear that my children will never know what an eviction notice looks like. I want to not go through the perfunctory measure of praise and worship, but I don't feel nothing or hear nothing or see anything. I demand signs and wonders to follow every aspect of my 
my life. That is only what happens for people in covenant. Look at Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23, verse number 19. God is not one to lie. He is not a mortal or a human being who will change his mind. <laughs> when he says something, he will do it. Tonight, I am not talking about houses. I'm talking about your destiny. I dare every person who's in this room to declare out loud, I'm under contract. Now, that, that was a little bit paltry. And the only reason why your decibel was that soft is because you don't know what God promised you. But if God has promised you anything, and you are standing on Numbers 23 that my God has never lied to me that whatever he spoke over my life here it is even while I was still in my mother's womb I will not die until every promise comes to pass if you believe it I need you to demonstrate it not by acting like you are outside of his will but I need you to demonstrate it like you know his word is good if he said it I believe it to be so if he promised me it is a matter of time before it manifests before it manifests in my life I am um, I'm trusting God because God's word is bond The only problem with that, Thomas, is the other side of it. It is not God's word that is in question. It's ours. I got to ask you, and I don't reckon too many of you are going to shout or celebrate or scream behind this. What covenant have you made with God? How are you under contract and act like you're for sale? I, I don't know how you keep entertaining things that are not of God as if you have not been bought with a price. I'm trying to figure out how in the world do you keep leasing yourself out to people who can't afford your soul can't pay the ransom for your destiny. We're never willing to pay the price for your redemption and for your sin. How in the world are you under contract and still have an open house? Letting people walk over you and let people take from you and let people use you when you know they are not a serious contender for what it requires for your emotional and spiritual upkeep. You got to be firm to say you can't afford me. You can afford the house, but you can't afford the upkeep. What covenant have you made under God? You keep asking God to promise something and yet you have not done anything in return. Tonight I want to challenge you that you make a covenant with God. A covenant with God that will refortify your faith. A covenant with God that says, God, you can trust me because I don't want to lose my place with you. A covenant with God because I've seen too many of my family evicted out of your will. I want to come under covenant with God. Why? Because I'm, I'm connected to a ministry and to a church that is covenantal in nature. I want to be in covenant, a part of a ministry that I have seen feed over half million people in the pandemic. I want to come under covenant with a ministry that would send $50,000 to Haiti within one week. I want to be in covenant 
with a ministry that I have seen take in families that had to evacuate from Louisiana. I want to come under covenant with the church that I have seen give out $100,000 in college scholarships to people who otherwise would not have gotten there. I want to come under covenant with a ministry who will bless people while they are in debt. I want to be under that kind of covenant because I serve a covenant-keeping God. New birth, lend me your ear. Two years ago, we did 365. We challenged ourselves and believed by faith that with a pastor we did not know, in a transition that we were uncertain of, that you would bless us in one Sunday to do $365,000 over tithes and offerings. And God, we saw you exceed it. Last year, in the middle of a pandemic, we lowered our expectation while you raised the bar. And we only asked for 235. Now, God, after it is that you brought us through a global pandemic, after we have seen every hospital in a 40-mile region caught to capacity, after it is that over 130 black morticians have died in the last year, after it is that there's a debate on Capitol Hill as to whether we should wear a mask or not, we're mindful that you kept us alive, that you sustained us, that you continue to help us to prosper in a pandemic. And God said, Jamal, I did all of that. Now, what are you going to do? I said, God, tonight I'm coming under covenant with New Birth Cathedral that our faith is of such that we're going to trust you, we're going to believe you, that in just one Sunday, in one Sunday, we're going to raise $700,000 above our tithes. Oh, y'all didn't get the vision yet. I better say it again. On October 24th, our church is going to give $700,000 above our time. They don't have the faith for it yet. Let me try it again. On October the 24th, New Birth is going to model to the entire world what faith and favor and covenant is supposed to look like. We're going to do it. In just one Sunday. New birth, here's what I am challenging you to do. I am challenging you to come under covenant. That you're making an agreement. You're saying, God, I'm giving you my word. And just like your word has never failed, mine will not in this. I am literally faithful over a few things. But I expect you to make me ruler over many. Hear this, new birth, please. Whatever it is that you do, do not fade out on me because we're getting ready to make a covenant together. For October 24th, seven people are going to give a seed in one day for $7,000. That number is now six because I'm going to lead by example. And three of our leaders already signed up to do so on last night when they heard the vision. 200 are going to give 1,700 on October the 24th. 1,000 of you who are watching right now are going to give a seed of 700. 100 are going to give a seed of 70. And I want to challenge 300 children under 12 to give a gift of seven. I am asking you and your family to begin praying about your covenant. I need you to look back over your life and think about the promises that God has made. And I want you to ask yourself, has he ever broken his promise? 
Has he ever not lived up to his word? This is a small thing. But I want God to be able to trust me in it. I want you to flash that back on the screen because I need you praying for it even in this moment. Six of you, well, five of you now, giving a seed of 7,000. Again, I'm not asking for you to do it tonight. 200 of you are going to give 1,700. 1,000 of you are going to give 700. 100 of you are going to give 70. 300 children under 12. I'm asking you to give a seed of seven. This is on October 24th. That is our covenant Sunday where we are modeling to God that we're going to do it. I'm going to stretch you tonight because I don't want just you to do it. I want you to call your family. I want your family to come into this covenant with you. I want those of you who are entrepreneurs, I want you to give two different strands of giving, one for you, the other for your business. Embryonic entrepreneurs, one for you and one for your idea. I'm believing that we're going to do it. New birth has had to overcome unfathomable obstacles. But with God's help, aid, and assistance, we've conquered them all. The last frontier for us as a church to live out the dream of our late apostle is that this church is going to be debt free. Uh, I, I wish y'all had the faith enough for it. I can't be the only one that believes it. I said our church is going to be debt free. Y'all don't have enough faith for me. I wish you would turn up the volume. Our ministry is going to be debt free. I'm going to give it to you one last time till you shout, cheer, and clap at home. Every person who is a member of New Birth is going to be debt free. Every family is going to be homeowners that are debt free. I want you to lift up that hand. I want you to lift up that hand. I'm opening up for you to be in response to what it is that God is doing. Lord, I pray that you'll help us keep our word. I pray that you'll fortify us so we not falter on our commitment. God, we have failed you so many times before. But today, we press the refresh page. We start all over again. Thank you, dear Lord, because you are the God of another chance. Allow us to uphold this covenant. God, we're not going to let you down. Whatever we need to sacrifice, whatever we need to adjust, whatever we need to alter, whatever we need to change, we'll do it because we want to live up to our word. Those of you who have the God kind of faith, would you clap your hands and give God glory for it now? I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you even in this moment. I want to challenge you. Our, um, our, our website is up even in this moment. For those of you who are saying, Pastor, count me in. I want to be a part. I'm all in. I believe in the power of covenant. I've seen what it has done. I know what it can do. And I have every bit of confidence that covenant works. And covenant has authority. And covenant has strength. Hear this, friends of New Birth. On October 24th, it's going to be our amazing day. You don't have to wait until that day. Those of you, I told our leaders last night who want to pay on layaway. You want to give a little bit every week until you get to the 24th. Like me, you can't even trust yourself to keep that much money until the 24th of October. You better just, just sow it in now. I, I operate out of the principle of daily bread. Every time I get something, I give it that day. I can't even wait till Sunday to give to God because God doesn't wait till Sunday to bless me. So I want you, please, even if you want to text your commitment, that information is on the screen. 
how those of you who want to register your commitment, your covenant, uh, might I say, you're able to do it and do it even in this moment. Those of you who are in this room who know we serve a covenant-keeping God, would you give God glory and praise right now? Come on, I said, if you know you serve a covenant-keeping God, word is bond. We're coming under bond for 700000 on October 24th. I know that this uh, was a church meeting. I know uh, that this was a vision casting for the citizens of New Birth. Uh, but for those of you who meandered into this stream tonight, and you're saying, you know what? I'm going to try God. You know what? I'm going to put him to the test. You know what? I want to see if this is hocus pocus or whether this is really real. Here's what I'm asking you to do. I, I ain't never given you this offer before. I want you to join New Birth on probation. I want you to join tonight and just for a limited membership between now and October 24th. And I want you to see what God does in that time. I want you to see that this is not a rumor, but we mean this thing, that God is a promise-keeping God. You've been looking for a church to grow, looking for a church to be fed, looking for a church to be nurtured, to be developed. Here it is, to be stretched, to be prodded, and to be pushed. This is your church. Now, I know that you are having to swallow real hard tonight. I know that uh, th th this is a whole lot for you to pull together. $7,000, Pastor? You got more than that amount of money on TVs in the walls of your house. How you got big TVs but got a small vision? I want you to trust God for it. $1,700, Pastor, you sure? You got all of them shoes but your soul is wore down. I got to ask you, $700, Pastor? Do you know how much you have spent on buying food out in the middle of this pandemic from DoorDax, from Uber Eats, y'all ain't saying nothing, from white paper bags and drive through You can't trust God for that. $70, you give that to Starbucks in less than two weeks. You can't trust God for that. God will do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you can think, what you can dream, what you can imagine. I was so uh, delighted to pray with you on this morning and every Tuesday uh, for the next seven weeks. I'm going to be praying with you at 7 a.m. for seven minutes. I want you to log on to any of our platforms and you'll be able to pray with us. Here's what I want you to do. Your covenant is not due until October 24th. Seven is the number of completion. Seven is the number of completion. Tonight, I want you to give an offering. The only thing that I ask is that you put seven at the end of it. So whether you're giving 27, 37, 57, 77, 107, I want you to give a seed and put seven on the end of it. That's your way of winking at me, saying, Pastor, I'm in. But don't ask me for that covenant today. I got till October 24th. I want you to get that best seat in your hand, whether you're giving through GiveLify, PushPay, text to give whether you're dropping it in the mail to Woodrow Road or you're dropping it off. I want you to be in our inner circle of faith, our inner circle of trust. And I want you to see God demonstrate amazing things. I need you to do it, and I need you to do it right now because I'm telling you, by October 24th, I'm believing we're going to be living at a different space, occupying a different level, and our families will be unrecognizable because of the glory that rests on their lives. Those of you who are glad to be under covenant tonight, let's give God praise and glory, honor and thanksgiving. Come on, in an uproarious way. Come on, in a resounding way. Would you give God glory? Would you give, come on, come on, come on. New birth is so much going on at our church. Uh, Saturday is campus refurb uh, refurbishment day. Uh, we're going to be out in the garden. We're going to be planting flowers. We're going to be cleaning up our campus. Every Saturday, as you know, uh, is our king's table. We fed over 700,000 people. We're now on the road to 1 million. Those of you who are in need, I need you to please come and be a part. Have a seat 
at the Kings at Table. Sunday morning, I don't even know where you worshiping, where you watching, where you streaming. Ain't no worship experience. I know I said it bad, but ain't no worship experience like New Birth. You ought to be here Sunday morning, 9.30, 11.30, 1.30, and then 8 o'clock at night. Your pastor loves you. I'm praying for you. Stay tuned and see what's happening at your church. Hey, New Birth, it's time for our video announcements. Prepare for a shift in your mindset and thought process. Dr. Bryant's new series, Word is Bond, will bring next level illumination and revelation. Dr. Bryant's teachings will navigate us towards our next destination as we explore the importance of covenant. As we continue to operate in love and in service to our community, we will prepare for our day of over and above giving. On Sunday, October 24th, we will be endeavoring to reduce our church debt address much needed maintenance for our facility, offer support to those impacted financially by the pandemic and natural disasters. Because you have accepted the clarion call to give sacrificially, hundreds of souls have been saved. Thousands are served weekly at our King's Table and COVID-19 vaccines are provided at no cost to the community. We are doing amazing work and changing the lives of many. Text NB Bond 700 to 7 71441 right now to make your commitment to our bond 700 giving campaign also please join us weekly for our tuesday morning prayer call at 7 a.m our prayer call number is 609 663-5452. Standard long distance rates will apply. Volunteers, you are needed to help us beautify our campus and local community. On Saturday, September 18th, from 8 to 11 a.m., we will clean and beautify our church grounds. Volunteers are also needed in the Garden of Eden. Volunteer teams will also go off campus to pick up trash in areas around Newburgh. We hope that you can join us. Emerging Generations is taking over the Garden of Eden. All youth ages 12 to 18 meet us on the New Birth Campus on Saturday, September 18th from 9 to 11 a.m. for some sunshine and garden fun. Parents, volunteers, EG leaders, and youth should all RSVP by September 13th by using the link below. Our Discovering Intimacy Kingdom Relationships class is a new, powerful, life-affirming class that is designed for everyone. Learn how to relate with one another and understand your God-given need for intimacy. Classes will begin on Sunday, October 3rd from noon to 1 p.m. The Discovering Intimacy book is now available in our Call to Conquer bookstore. Please visit wearenewbirth.org backslash events for more information. Join the conversations on virtual therapy on Thursdays, October 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. We have invited top leading clinical and professional therapists to share how to work on your mind in challenging times. Please visit wearenewbirth.org backslash events to register. New Birth, save the date. It's time to pull up and worship again. Join us on our campus on Sunday, September 26th at 9.30 a.m. Our special guest will be none other than the amazing Pastor Mike Jr. After the celebration, you can get a COVID vaccine. We will be offering vaccines from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in our Family Life Center. Bring everyone you know that has not received a vaccine. And that's going to do it for today's video announcements.